Ooh, this is a good one. The do not under any circumstances play these songs DJ list. What's going on everybody? So new video coming at you. So I thought I would start looking in of all places Reddit for different things as far as weddings are, con are concerned. One, I don't know what, like who I want to watch these videos. Do I want photographers to watch these videos? Do I want potential clients to watch these videos and maybe do some helpful stuff for them. And then I started thinking, well, why not both? Why not just have both the wet, the wedding industry as photographers and for, you know, potential clients that might have some issues and might find some nuggets of value in there. Why not, you know, do videos for that? So what ultimately I ended up doing is like, well, man, I need to find a lot of these ideas. I need to find like, I need to find some content to kind of like exp explain how I would approach certain situations without being directly asked these situations by an audience since my channel is still really new. So what exactly do I do? Well, I hit up Reddit. Reddit of all places, if you don't know, Reddit is a very, it's, it's, it's everything, right? I mean, you can find everything on Reddit, but what I wanted to do is really niche down and find exactly what I was looking for, which is weddings and different stuff like that. And I'll mention and put down in the description below what Reddit forums that I'm actually getting this information from. So you can follow those and look at those and comment on those if you would like, and also see some of my comments on there because I, like I said, do my best to kind of help people with issues they have from a photographer standpoint, because at this point I've shot almost a hundred weddings and that's not trying to tout or anything, but I've seen a lot of stuff happen. I mean, if you do something a hundred times, especially during a wedding day, if you're not familiar, you see a lot of stuff happen. So I try to help them from what I think could potentially benefit them or what could possibly, they could possibly stay away from. So without further ado, let's get into Reddit. As far as Reddit goes, obviously, as you know, I'm going to get a lot of different different questions coming from a bunch of different ways, be it people working in the wedding industry or, you know, potential brides and grooms trying to find out different things on their wedding day, whether it be photography related or not. So the first one I see is lots of recent potential inquiries and no bookings. Is there anyone else having this issue lately? I'm full time in the West Coast of the US. I do weddings and portraits and for some odd reason, I hardly have any weddings booked for next year. I've lately been getting, well, this is a long one, getting many inquiries for weddings that I'm available for. A lot of them put in the contact box. They're interested in my most expensive package, many local weddings and a few non-local in different cities still in my state. I reply quickly and simply tell them I'm available, tell them, send them full pricing uh, that includes additions. But I mean, there's a lot to unpack here. I mean, because they asked a whole lot of different questions. So I guess what we're going to do is actually break it down. Uh, is anyone else having these problems lately as far as like, yeah, of course, have those problems all the time. People will contact you and ghost. There's a bunch of different reasons why this could be. They could have forgotten. They could have email going to their spam folder that came from you. There could be, there's, they could just ghost and be like, oh, well, he cost, they cost this much. I don't want to spend or value that much, maybe I will go with someone else. So what could you do to kind of fix that? Again, being that there are a lot of a lot of potential problems there, there's also a lot of potential fixes. So what you could do is possibly not post your or send your prices. You could send your starting price. If they can't make that, then you know, then they, they're probably not a client for you. Um, a lot of people, and that's, that's the prices thing. I mean, I know there's arguments one way or the other. It really doesn't matter what you do as long as you feel comfortable doing it. But yeah, that, that's one way of maybe kind of getting people into the door and feeling comfortable with that. But as he said later on in his post, they're wanting the most expensive package. How are they finding your page? If they're going directly through the contact page and they're not going through uh, any other means like social media or anything like that, how are how are they finding your page? What could be happening is these could be spam accounts. I mean, just going through, I've seen an array of spam accounts. It's crazy what these spammers are trying to do. And honestly, a lot of the times, I don't even know what they benefit out of it. They never get any information from me. There have been a few that are trying to be like, Oh, well, let me connect to your account or pay if you've gotten them. Uh, I'll pay you an additional X amount and then you can pay the wedding planner or something like that. And that's just like obviously a red flag. Uh, definitely don't go through with that if you've had that. Um, if you have and you have gone through with that, 
and it went okay, please let me know in the comments below because I'm not real sure how that could go okay. And I'm also not real sure how they could actually get into your account if you were to do that. I'm assuming something would happen. They'd probably cancel the check if that's because that's what they're always trying to do, send you a check. Okay, so the, the next thing they say is they actually dislike talking on the phone. I can't say, f I cannot tell you that I like talking on the phone. I'm getting more used to talking on the phone and that's kind of what I would suggest you work on. Uh, because if you get them on the phone, you have an opportunity to get to know how serious they are, how they are going to interact with you, uh, if they like you, if you like them. I mean, because ultimately, you could book out all your weddings for next year and have, if, if you, let's say you're just looking for 30 weddings next year, you could book the entire 30 weddings out and it'd be 30 weddings of people you just absolutely do not want to shoot. Um, say you, I don't know, they're doing like a, a Lord of the Rings theme. I don't know why that, why that popped in my head, but they're doing like a Lord of the Rings thing theme and you do not like Lord of the Rings and you have 10 of those for whatever reason maybe Lord of the Rings got popular again because of the new show I guess maybe that's why it popped in my head maybe that's what what they're doing and you do not like it you don't like Lord of the Rings so you're shooting 10 of those types of weddings and you don't even like them so basically yeah you, you're doing this as a job and you do obviously need to get paid um, continued cash, cash flow and stuff like that. Obviously, that's how our businesses go. If you're booking those 10 out and you're not going to enjoy them, there are 10 other potential bookings that you cannot do now because you already have those dates booked out. And those might be the couples that you really want to shoot. Uh, maybe they're outdoor and adventurous and you want mountaintops. Instead, you're shooting in, I don't know, a venue that's designed up to look like Lord of the Rings themed and you want to be outside. That's obviously going to be a tough choice to make because you don't know if you're going to fill those bookings with people or not. But I can guarantee that if you do book those weddings that you're not going to fill the weddings that you want to fill. That's how you would kind of learn on the phone what who they are, what they're looking for, and if you two kind of mesh well together. So definitely get used to talking on the phone. I know it sucks. Phones conversations are weird closing the phone conversation out is the absolute worst in my opinion i hate the final bit of the f end of the phone call and you're like okay bye <laughs> you know like how do you close it out and i don't I, it's just it's it's awkward it is so but I, I would definitely say it's it's something you should get used to all right let's check out another one it's really tough to do these ones that actually have pictures they're asking questions about certain dresses they should wear or not wear to a wedding it's appropriate to wear a wedding as a wedding guest, I hate dresses. I would dress up with nice jewelry and hair. Please be nice, lol. I'll flash up on the screen now what the uh, what the dress looks like. I would say yes. Um, obviously, if it's a black tie wedding and they are looking for a certain aesthetic as far as their wedding guest goes, I know some of my couples have actually wanted their wedding guests to all match the wedding themed color. I, it's not a bad thing. I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just, it's kind of... It's different. It's just different. We'll just say that. But yeah, I, w I would say if, as long as the wedding doesn't like the wedding party or the the bride and groom don't want you to wear something in that manner, I think you would be okay. But it, they usually tell you that it's a black tie wedding or they expect or would like you to wear a whatever outfit. If they don't state that they don't want you to wear something like that, I would assume they would state that they don't want you to wear something like that otherwise i mean yeah it looks great i think you you know if you feel comfortable in it because a wedding day can be very long depending on when you're actually able to show up um yeah definitely wear something comfortable wear something you want to dance in get on the floor do those dances so us photographers can get those shots you can dance in that get it as long as the bride and groom doesn't say that they don't want you to wear something i think you're good to go this is a good one so she's not having bridesmaids so like no wedding party which I can't say that I, I dislike that or like that. I do like whenever it's just the bride and groom they don't have a wedding party because you have more time with them and you can capture more of those portrait pictures which I enjoy doing and the creative stuff and all that. That is that is probably one of the fun times on the wedding day for a photographer. And the, the Now the bridal party, they can be fun too, obviously, but you get the more intimate shots and stuff like that if there's not a bunch of people around looking. Obviously, you know that. But she's asking what a... Uh, What's a fun way that she can tell her close friends that they would have been in their bridal party? It's a good question. I mean, 
I would say there, I mean, there's a bunch of boxes out there now that you can like pre-get with them packed full of stuff or some gift type boxes and then just write a note. I mean, it, it obviously depends on how much you want to spend. If you want to just, I say, I'd say just a, a cool card or maybe you have a wedding photographer already, possibly. Uh, go and ask your wedding photographer, say, hey, these are the people that I would want to have in my, uh, wanted to have in my bridal party. We don't want a bridal party that day. We want it just to just be me and my significant other. Cool. Let's do these pictures, or would you mind coming over and doing these pictures? It might cost you an additional amount, but would you come over and do these pictures in like a pajama party, or girls' night, or guys' night, or whatever the case may be, or however it's going, uh, and just have like a little soiree type thing at your house, and just capture those candid moments of you and the ladies or guys having a good time, and I think that would be some cool shots, and it'd be fun for the girls. You know, ha hire, a, hire a makeup artist to come in and do makeup for you or if you don't want to do that do each other's makeup i mean you're not going anywhere you're probably just watching a movie having some food which everyone loves that so why not just do it that way i mean that would be awesome i would have fun doing that invite me i'll come Ooh, this is a good one the do not under any circumstances play these songs dj list oh man i'm not a dj and i i have no idea what their realm looks like as far as the work goes other than what i see myself uh building playlists stuff like that keeping everything on task if you're a good dj respect because you keep my job at the end of the night flowing you get my party shots awesome love it i've worked with some good djs i've worked with some not so good djs the good ones are really fun and keep the energy level way up and you get a lot of dance shots everyone has fun i start having fun it's just a good time whenever you can get everybody on the floor Obviously, I know there, even with the best DJs out there, there's going to be wedding parties that are like not the dancing type. But there's usually always one song, one way or the other, that will get everyone on the floor. Oh, one that comes to mind that's really, it's every time it comes on, I kind of cringe now, but I know I'm going to get good shots are dances like the Cupid Shuffle. Stuff like that, people having fun. Yeah, there and sometimes that's on shot lists where people are on the DJ list where people are like, we don't want that song. I totally get it. I've heard it so many times, sometimes I don't want that song. So the overall question is what would you include on the list? They ha they're they're asking basically the title is what not to include, but then they're asking what should they include. Basically I would say there there are all kinds of like line dance type stuff out there that would cater to what you would want as far as your likes go, um, your fiance's likes, they're you know, it's gonna be your uh that their likes go. Obviously can put those two things, mesh them together. If there's songs that you don't absolutely want to hear, then definitely put those on there where you don't hear them. Uh, the hard part is if you open it up and people start requesting it, then the DJ has to set, say no, but that's their job, not yours, so definitely, you know, go in that direction where you don't have to be the bad guy. You just put that on there and make sure the DJ, in a way that doesn't make you seem like the bad guy, make sure the DJ just says, no, we can't play that song, I don't have rights to it, or no, we don't play, we can't play that song, I don't have it, or something along those lines. That way, as people are enjoying the rest of the night and possibly start drinking if you have, you know, alcohol at your wedding, uh, that way you... you avoid drunk uncle charles walking i can't believe you you not let me play this song this, this is my favorite song and i want everybody to dance to it they're all saying like yeah you, we wanted to play this song we wanted to enjoy ourselves and enjoy the dance or whatever and then you know people are just flustered so just say that would be the simple thing like i don't have that song or you know have rights to that song whatever the case may be leave it to the dj they should be able to say to them that you know no we're, we're, we can't play that one for whatever reason but yeah, I think the right songs would be the ones that you like the most. I've heard things from country music all the way up to like my favorites, like playing Fall Out Boy and stuff like that. Or even better, when uh, Panic at the Disco, the I can't remember the name of the song, but <laughs> that song coming on at a wedding is awesome. One, because that's my generation. I love that song. Two, everybody thinks it's hilarious and starts just like dancing to it. It's great. Yeah, that's, that's probably, that'd be the best way I would think to build a list okay so one more and then we'll wrap this up let me know if you guys like this in the comments below and like to see more videos like this I, I like making them I think they're fun there's a lot of just weird questions out there that may be painfully obvious but 
then once you start thinking about it, people are like, th this is like their first wedding. So it's not painfully obvious, and they've only got one day to really do this right. So yeah, they want to get it right. This is the last one. This is kind of a this is kind of a weird one. So how much would you pay as a wedding guest? Not sure what they mean by how much they would pay, like a cover charge to get in. My family of four is going to a wedding this weekend. We usually give hundred dollars a person as a gift. Okay, so they're saying as a gift. I wouldn't say how much. I don't know if I'd word it that way. My son can't came down with COVID, can no longer go, so that's one less person. So there's only three people, I'm assuming. So my husband and son, two, well, two, uh, two people then. How much would I give now? We've already RSVP for four. I mean, that's a tough one. So I don't, I would say if they had a registry, obviously go look at that and see if you could find something on there that's not going to break the bank. Some registries are crazy. You, you're, you're not getting that for you. That's, that's an insane ask. Why? It's just, yeah, no, uh-uh. So, I get what they're saying because they RSVP'd for four people, but, I mean, contact the, uh, contact the bride and groom if it's not that far off. Uh, say, hey, we RSVP'd for four, so-and-so got sick, there's only two of us coming now because, you know, let's say there. Obviously not your fault, COVID's a destroyer of all things and we all hate it, so hopefully they understand. The only thing that you really are technically paying for as a wedding guest would probably be the food. Um, I wouldn't say go as far as expecting a good meal on like on the wedding day or something like that, or saying that you have to pay X amount because you're there. They want, I mean, as I, as I see it, the couple really wants people that they know and love to be around them for the day. If you're going out of your way to go there, then you're actually using your time to go there. I mean, I'm sure, other than going to a wedding, if that wedding didn't exist or never came about, you would find something else to do that weekend that you probably enjoy yourself, staying home with your sick kid uh, and husband or whatever the case may be, you know, you, that you might enjoy yourself rather than going out and, you know, going to a wedding and having to spend money that you feel like you have to spend because you're going to this wedding. Uh, I think $100 per person, that's, I think it's very generous. Um, being that there are only two of you going now, yeah, I wouldn't pay for those two additional plates of food that you are paying for. I think that the the wedding uh, party or the, the bride and groom or the partner A, partner B should definitely know that not everyone's going to make it. Even if you are SVP, things happen. Uh, what if your plane broke down, you couldn't make the flight there? That You have no control over that. What are you supposed to do? You would just not be able to go just how it is so i wouldn't feel bad as far as like saying that those two aren't coming now maybe giving them 200 dollars. but if you look at the gifts on the registry kind of seeing like where all that lies where they got most they're wanting most of their gifts from that way maybe you could get them a gift card to that store or location or if they're just looking for a honeymoon fun i mean obviously there's so many different ways that the bride and groom uh can actually set this up um, how they want to receive gifts. Yeah, I think $100 is definitely, like, definitely fair. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty high up there, for sure. I know I didn't ask for that during my wedding, but my wedding was quite some time ago, so $100 in this economy would be, like, $50 then, so I don't know, or vice versa. I don't, anyway, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'd say. I'd say that's a fair, a fair assessment. But yeah, guys, that's that is about it. That is a uh, that's all for this video. Like I said, I love making this one. I would love to make more. I might just make more to see if it resonates with other people. But yeah, leave your comments below on what you guys think. I want to what your answers are too. Like I'm not the end all be all. Definitely tell me what you guys think on those questions as well. Especially the dress. Should she wear it? Should she not? I don't know. I don't wear a dress normally. Yeah, guys, but that's what I think about it. That's how I think you know the answer to these questions should be. If you think something different, definitely let me know in the comments below. We will see you in the next video. I think I'm going to go over like some what's in my bag type stuff or something. I don't know. Let me know what you'd like to see. As a wedding photographer in the Midwest, I carry all kinds of crazy stuff because we never know what the weather's going to be like. But we'll see you in the next one, guys. Later.